الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين وكفى الصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ومن سن سنته واهتدى بهده لا يوم الدين ما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تكونوا كالذين آذوا موسى فبرأه الله مما قالوا وكان عند الله وجيها يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاض فوضا عظيما صدق الله العظيم ما ديان رسپكتد برادر اند سسترز ان اسلام السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله سسترز الله سبحانه وتعالى هاف ريفيل ان سوره الاحزاب ديز 3 ايات ويتش اي ريسايتد تو يو ان ذا بيجنينج سو از يو نو ذات سوره الاحزاب It's a very uh, unique surah of Quran. This surah was revealed to our Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam after the battle of Khandaq, after the battle of Trench. So a quick uh, preview of that is that as you know that the battle of no, Badr is the first one, right? the battle of uhud is the second one and then the battle of khandaq or uh, the trench in the life of our rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam these are the only three battles that took place the rest of them were not battles the rest of them were some threats that madina was receiving from enemies from different tribes but these are the three main battles now in the first battle the battle of uh, badr right hunain as well yes the battle of badr uh, 313 sahaba against 1000 right muslims won battle of uhud 1000 muslims against 3000 non believers muslim won this as well but the but in the end they 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 lost third one the battle of trench nobody won no nobody lost because that battle in reality never never took place now my dear brothers and sisters the battle of trench is also known as ahzab because at, at that time 10000 of them came right and sahaba were only 3000 and it is called ahzab which means armies not just one army armies so these people got together the enemies and they thought that let's have a full fledged onslaught on medina and let's finish muslims and rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam so islam will die so they came 10000 of them but our rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam his uh his sunnah was his habit was that he would always sit down with his uh companions and he will do mashwara he will ask their their opinions that this is a, a danger that is coming what do you think how should we face this uh, danger and then he will turn to one sahabi the second sahabi so he will ask their their opinions and then whatever allah subhanahu wa taala would wish rasulullah will decide so in this in this Uh, at this point rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked several sahaba so several sahaba gave several opinions but then there was one sahabi who was from iran right his name was salman al farsi a very strange sahabi because he was 
a fire worshipper, right, all his life. It's a long story, but at the end, he met Rasul Sallallahu and he became Muslim. He became a Sahabi. So when Rasulullah turned to him for his opinion, now remember, he was from, from a different country. So he said that here in Arab, in Arabia, I see that you people fight uh, wars differently. Back home in, in Iran, we fight our enemies differently. So Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked, what do you do? We say that what we do is that first we try to stop the enemies from coming to our city. Right? So if the enemies will not reach our city, then the war will never take place. So how can we block their access to our city? So Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked, how do you do that? He said, well, we dig trench, trenches. We dig trenches, khandaq. And then he explained to Rasul Sallallahu thoroughly how uh, wide those trenches should be, how deep it should be. And then he, as if he was an engineer, right? Or an architect. He told Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he took Rasulullah outside Medina, that, that from this end of Medina to that end of Medina, you know, we, you know, we should dig a trench. So Rasul heard this, his opinion. He gave a, a deep thought. And because this was something new, it was a very novel, new idea. So Rasul finally, after thinking deeply, decided that I'll go with the opinion of Salman al-Farsi. That's when Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam looked at the number of Sahaba. So there were 3,000, right? Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made 100 Jamaats, 100 groups. Or, or in other words, Rasulullah divided Sahaba into 100 groups. Each group consisting of 10 people, right? So remember, they had to dig the trench from one corner of the city uh, to the other corner of the city. And then Rasulullah said, every group, your job would be to dig this trench 10 meter long or so. Wallahu alam bisawab. So Sahaba said, fine. Now remember, in Medina at that time, they did not have those, you know, digging equipments right now somehow or other they managed to get some equipment that will help them in digging a problem was that the time was very wrong it was summer peak time of summer right so they have to do this in hot summer days. Second thing was that it was a time when Sahaba were facing acute shortage of food. Literally acute shortage of food. As you know that the food used to come from Damascus. So the caravans will bring food from Damascus. And as we all know that when Ibrahim al-Islam made dua, right? He did not make dua that Allah make Makkah a hub of uh, uh, vegetation, right? No, he said, وَجَعَلْ رَبَّنَا وَبَعَثْ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِنْ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send, send food to Makkah. So for example, brothers, if you go for Umrah, right? Or Hajj, when you go to Saudi Arabia, you go to any store in Makkah. You will not sign, see a single box of food, whether it's candies or, or uh, juice, whatever you want to buy, that is made in Saudi Arabia. I mean, it's kind of funny that when I went for, for Umrah last time or Hajj, I went to a store in Makkah. To, to get uh, something to drink and guess what I found there 
Florida tropical orange juice there. <laughs> it's that there, right? That is a kind of miracle of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam or the sign of Allah's acceptance of his dua that nothing is made in Saudi Arabia, no food, literally no food. But you will get all kind of food in Makkatul Mukarrama. Why? Because it comes from different parts of the world. At the time of Khandaq, the caravans were not coming because of this danger. So the, the food supply w was broken. So in Medina Munawara, they were facing acute shortage of food, plus poverty as well. Tough days. But because it was the order from our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sahaba said, yes, Samiana wa ata'ana. You have ordered us, we are going to obey. So now remember 100 groups, 100 groups of Sahaba, each of them consist, consisting of how many people with us? 10. Digging. Now they are digging, they are sweating, you know, scorching sun, you know, hunger, but still they are digging. And they have to dig really deep. Some of them would faint out of hunger, literally faint. So, once a such Sahabi who was facing acute hunger, but still working, he saw Rasul Sallam digging. Right? Rasulullah was working like any other Sahabi was working. So he came to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said that, Ya Rasulullah, you ordered us to dig, we are complying by your order. But Ya, ya Rasulullah, I would like to show you my sacrifice for the sake of Allah. What is your sacrifice? He said, I'm so hungry, I'm so hungry, but I'm still working, obeying you. And out of hunger, my back, in order to keep my back straight, right, I have tied a, a stone on my stomach and I had covered that stone with my kurta, with my shirt. But I'm just telling you, O oh, 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 Prophet of Allah. So look, this is my stone, he uncovered and he then, you know, uh, covered it with his shirt. He said, this is between you and me and, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Ya Rasulullah, I'm so hungry. So Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I'll show you something. Rasulullah uncovered his stomach and he said, if you have one stone, I have tied two stones here. So we are all in together. So this Sahabi, when he saw two stones tied on the stomach of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, he was speechless. Right? So this is leadership. Anyhow, by the way, I'll stop here and I'll just remind you, since I see spring break is here, I see many youngsters here, right? So let me, youngsters, let me, I think your dad knows it. But I'm going to tell you a very beautiful story of Khandaq, right? Now pay attention. Nobody should be on his phone. <laughs> Young boys and girls, one beautiful incident happened during the Battle of Khandaq, which is called a miracle of our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? What happened in this battle was that a Sahabi whose name was Jabir ibn Abdullah, right? He was also digging trench. But that day, he, when he saw that our Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam is extremely hungry, and he saw that Rasulullah is looking physically weak and tired because of this constant digging of the trench, so. He went to his wife, Jabir, went to his wife and he said that, you know, yes, we are also poor, we are also hungry, yes, we have shortage of food, but I still would like to do something for our Rasul Sallallahu because today he's looking very, very hungry, maybe he had not eaten for a day or two. So she said, what can we do? Tell, tell me, she said that, what do we have? She said, look, we have only one goat. <laughs> one goat and I have some flour one goat that's all we have so 
he Jabir asked his wife that okay if we were to invite Rasul Sallam, it would not look good on my part to invite only him I have how many people should I invite with him or how many people can eat if we we'll kill the goat make some curry goat curry and with the flour that you have how much bread can you make how many people can eat so she thought she said maybe seven to eight people that's it by the way that goat was a, was a baby goat not the one that we find 30 pound no, no, the small one so he said okay so can we invite Rasul today he said yes call him afternoon or, or late afternoon so Jabir ibn Abdullah killed the goat made the meat and she started right uh, making preparation so Jabir ibn Abdullah went straight to Rasul sallam, and he said that Ya, ya Rasulullah I'm inviting you to come to my house honor us by being our guest and we are going to have food for you and Ya, ya Rasulullah in this huge crowd of 3000 people you can pick 7 to 8 of your Sahaba who can accompany you Rasulullah said how many people he says seven to eight people that's it that's all I have so Rasul Rasul said whom seven and eight people now Rasulullah stood up and then Rasulullah addressed those three thousand Sahaba three thousand of them and he said that oh people listen today we are all going to eat at Jabir ibn Abdullah's house three thousand people we are all going to go and eat at Jabir's house remember brothers these people are hungry they are digging trench they are really really hungry so Jabir ibn Abdullah when he heard this he said that this is not a common uh, way Rasulullah is not like that why did he but brother, here comes the Iman that if Rasul have done something it must be right it must be. I cannot question Rasulullah he is the Rasul of Allah he is inviting and Allah will help so he heard this he of course as a human being right he felt a little bit uncomfortable but he did not question Rasulullah he started going back to his home literally running so Rasulullah said no no Jabir come here come, here, come, come, here, come back come back he came back he said he Sassam said to Jabir that listen when I will come to your home right at that time right start serving food if somebody comes before me to your home do not serve food let me come first first she said okay so Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went there and 3,000 Sahaba are with him right now look at this mu'ajizah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to the kitchen area of Jabir's house uncovered that small pot that had goat curry Rasulullah sallam uncovered and then Rasulullah sallam read Allahu wallahu alam what Rasulullah read and then he blew over that curry right he read something and blew over that curry covered it then Rasulullah went to the place where she was going to make bread and Rasulullah Sallam read something and blew over that flower there were few women who were going to make the bread and then Rasul Sallam said that now start serving and then Rasul said the way we are going to organize it some Sahaba will come right now remember in those days the house was small so they had it outside outside so maybe 100 people can eat together and Rasulullah would say to Jabir, Jabir, you serve. And maybe some other Sahaba were helping him in serving. Wallahu alam. So a group of Sahaba will come, eat, leave. Another will come, eat, leave. Eat, leave. It must have taken three, four hours, right? And Rasulullah did not eat. What happened was that Jabir and his wife, you know, they were astonished to see that people are coming. 
and they are hungry, working in the field. Imagine how hungry they must be. Each one of them were eating to, to their fill, and then they will leave. Another group come, leave. Brothers and sisters, in this way, all 3,000 Sahaba ate and they ate well. All three of them. 3,000 of them. Everybody had eaten and they left. And then Rasulullah said, turned to Jabir, he said, Jabir, who else is left now? So Jabir said, Ya Rasulullah, you, me and my wife, that's it. Everybody had, had eaten. So Rasulullah said, okay, now let's sit down and we three are going to eat together. So they ate together, right? And after that, Rasulullah said, Jabir, see how much curry is left in that big pot and how much flour is left there. So Jabir's wife said that, Ya, ya Rasulullah, the same amount of curry is left, the amount with which we started in the beginning. And the same amount of flour is left with which we started in, in the beginning. This was the mu'ajiza or a, of the miracle of our of, of our rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam it was nothing but a miracle right so th this have this miracle happened in the during the time of khandaq the the time of trench so this is why especially youngsters i would like to emphasize this point that look in the this incident teaches us among other things one important thing that just by following the sunnah of your Rasul Wasallam, Allah will bless your life. Because when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves his Rasul so much, right, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cause Rasulullah to do so many miracles. Imagine if you will follow the tradition, the lifestyle, the sunnah of your Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then how much Allah will bless you and your life and your time right so i just wanted to uh, you know share this incident with you now coming back to the trench brothers and sisters quickly so this trench was was dug and then when it was ready right when it was by the way again one more point what what kind of nasheed was rasulullah singing when he was digging the trench by the way, brother, singing is completely halal. Some people think, oh, sir. singing is completely halal. The, the lyrics have to be right. And of course, no, no, uh, no music, only duff. But singing is right. Sometimes if you see a religious person, an imam or scholar singing, so we, oh, you are singing? Oh, yeah, haram. No, it's not haram. Right? So what was the nasheed that Rasulullah was singing and Sahaba was singing with him when they were digging a trench? Who will give it a try? Ah, good. Jazakallah. Allahumma la aisha illa aishul akhira. Faghfir al ansara wal muhajira. The Rasul Salam used to say that there are other lines to that as well, but this was the main one. That, oh, oh Allah, the real life, aish, the life of comfort, the life of comfort is the life after death. Right? So Allah. Forgive all these muhajireen and, and ansar who are digging this trench. So all of the sahaba while digging, they would uh, join Rasul, Rasul uh, Sallam in digging. Because brothers, poetry and singing has special effect on human nature. Right? Provided the lyrics are not vulgar, they, they are good. Right? For example, I'll, I'll tell you, when you go to, let's say, any store in U.S., right? Any store. Uh, let's say you go to a, a, a gift store here, right? What do they, in order f to feel you, you comfortable, they always have a background music, right? Why they want you to feel good and spend more time in that shop so they can benefit more from your business. Islam had made all these things halal by taking out music from, from it and making sure that the poetry is not vulgar, it has good meaning. Right? So Rasul Sallallahu will recite this Allahumma la aisha illa, illa aisha al in a singing tone. 
in a singing tone, right? And then Faghfil Ansara wal Muhajir in a singing tone, and Sahaba will sing with Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So that is completely halal. Sometime you, in in the masjid, there should be some gatherings of nasheed, because Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam would ask his uh, Sahabi Hassan ibn Sabit, the the poet, to sing the poetry inside masjid, inside masjid. So just like we recite. Tilawat of Quran, right? There should be some nasheed uh, gathering inside the masajid. These are completely in line with the tradition of our of our Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But nowadays, brother, if you go on YouTube to Islam nasheed, some of the singers have so much music into it. Some of them, so those are not right, you know. Uh, you can still have good nasheed without this heavy music right anyhow so this is something that happened and then the sheeting happened while digging that the trench when the trench was was ready right mushrikeen came 10,000 of them they had never seen something like this this trench right their horses their camels were unable to jump over it right so they put a siege on the other side of the trench for one month. For one month. Each day they will try to bring their horses, you know, but those horses will stop close to the trench. And the horses will will not jump over the trench. For one full month, you know, this siege was there. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his mercy one day sent a storm, a heavy a powerful sandstorm and that storm was so intense that it blew the tents and the pans and the clothes and the belongings of these mushrikeen who had come and there was sand in every food in every kind of water there was sand inside so that the, the tents were, were blown away everything was gone so these mushrikeen they were tired as well because they were there since like a month. So they made mashra. They said, you know what? Let's make a U-turn. Go, go back to Makkah. It's not, it's, it's not going to happen. So without any fight, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved Medina Munawwara. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved the lives of Sahaba. At that time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed many ayahs. Many ayahs of Quran. For example, this famous ayah, which I think most of you know. قُلِ مَالِكَ الْمُلْكِ this particular ayah was revealed during the, the trench because when Rasulullah Sallallahu prophesied to Sahaba that one day, one day you will be ruling over Yemen and over Iran and over Rome right so those munafiqin hypocrites started making fun that these guys don't have enough to eat or drink they are dying out of hunger and thirst and their prophet is showing them dreams that they will be conquering the, the major powers of the world Rome and Persia and, and, and Yemen right so they started making mockery Sahaba heard about this mockery so they went to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they said, Ya Rasulullah, you had prophesied this, we bring complete Iman upon you. But that's these hypocrites who are making fun of you. So at that time Allah revealed these two particular ayahs to our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that meaning is, قُلِ مَالِكَ الْمُلْكِ O Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, you are the king of kings. تُؤْتِ الْمُلْكِ مَنْ You can give power to anyone you wish and and you can snatch power away from anyone that you wish and you can give dignity and honor to the one that you wish and you can give humiliation to anyone that you wish all good decisions are in your hand in the Qadir. you have the complete uh, control and power over everybody and over everything. So this 
Ayah was revealed at this time in so in the battle of of Khandaq or trench, many many beautiful incidents happened, right? And in in response, many many ayahs were revealed into uh, the Holy Quran. In conclusion, the reason why I mentioned this story, brothers, is that look, Sahaba were ready to obey Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in those tough times, right? None of them backed off. They all of them said, "Sami'ana wa ata'ana." So Allah revealed this ayah which I recited to you in the beginning of the Azab that "Yaghfir lakum zunubakum." وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ يُسْلِحْ لَكُمْ أَعْمَالَكُمْ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ And then Allah said, وَمَنْ يُتِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَادَ فَوْضًا عَظِيمًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, if you will follow and obey your, your Rasul صلى الله عليه وسلم, your life in this world would be successful and peaceful, and after death you will be forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, so brother, the crust of our deen, right, is in obeying Allah. His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam This is the message from uh, Khandaq May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Help you and me understand this Subhanallah wa bihamdi Subhanakallah wa bihamdik Nashadu wa la ilaha illa Anta nasdaq wa bihamdik